Throughout the spring quarter of Sunday School lessons, we have been taking a look at Jesus' power and authority. We have seen that Jesus has authority over the world. We have seen that Jesus has authority over the spirit. We have even seen that Jesus has authority over the death and resurrection. And though he has all power in his hands, though he has all authority in heaven and on earth, we find that there was a challenge. We find that people were not accepting of his power. We find that people were not accepting of his authority. Who was it that was not accepting of his power and authority? As we'll see here in our Sunday School lesson this week, it was the religious leaders. People who should have been following him, people who should have believed in his power and authority, we find that they were standing against, that they opposed Christ. Why did they oppose his power? Why did they oppose his authority? We'll see that here in our Sunday School lesson this week, and we'll take a look at what that means for us today, whether or not we should believe in, whether or not we should trust in his power and his authority, or should we challenge it? So our lesson this week, we'll see there in the first verse of our lesson, that it opens with Jesus and the disciples. They are making their way through the grain field and being hungry. We'll see that the disciples that they plucked and that they ate some heads of the grain as they passed through the fields. No big deal, right? No big deal that they, as they passed through the fields, that they plucked the heads of the grain and they, they snacked on them as they went through the fields. No big deal to us. However, if you were one of the religious leaders, it was a very big deal. And it's very interesting that the religious leaders, they just happened to be there to see Jesus and his disciples passing through the grain fields to see what the disciples were doing. It's just very interesting how the religious leaders, they were always seemingly around to antagonize Jesus and the disciples. We'll see there that the Pharisees, that they asked them, why are you doing what is not lawful to do on the Sabbath? Now they asked this question in regards to the Mosaic law. And I want you to notice that they asked this question with a sense of authority over the law itself to the disciples. We'll see there in the third and the fourth verse that Jesus, he has a response to them. He responds, have you not even read this? What David did when he was hungry, he and those who were with him, how he went into the house of God, took and ate the showbread and also gave some to those with him which is not lawful for any but the priest to eat. So this was Jesus pointing out that David, King David, that he was not being lawful, that he broke the law and nobody said a word to him about doing something that was not lawful. And so we'll see there in the fifth verse that Jesus, he then said to the religious leaders, the son of man is also the Lord of the Sabbath. So let's understand here that the religious leaders, the Pharisees here, that they were trying to speak with authority over what they thought they knew. And they were using this perceived authority, they were trying to use it over the disciples. Now, something that I do want you to understand is that the religious leaders, the Pharisees, that they were supposed to have authority over the Mosaic law. But the thing about that authority is that they needed to know the law inside and out. They needed to be knowledgeable of the law so that they could properly enforce the law since that's what they were trying to do. But again, the law was something that they should have been ministering. The law was something that they should have been teaching and they should have been faithful to the teaching. That is what, again, I said in last week's sermon. That's what I preached about last week. We have been given authority over the word of God. That is part of the commission, the task that has been assigned to us in ministering the good news and ministering the gospel around the world to all people. But in order for us to properly minister the good news, in order for us to properly minister the word of God, the gospel, in order for us to minister salvation, we need to be knowledgeable. We need to be knowledgeable of the word of God. When we aren't knowledgeable of the word of God, we do a disservice to ourselves first. But again, we do a disservice to the gospel. We do a disservice to, to the salvation of the Lord, to the word of God. And then most importantly, we do a disservice to those who we are trying to minister to. And we can happen to lead them astray or even push them away. And that's something that certainly happens in our world today. So lesson point here already is that if you're going to minister the word of God, which you should do as a child of God, be studied up, 
diligently study the word of God, be knowledgeable of the word of God so that you can properly minister the word of God. This is where the religious leaders, this is where the Pharisees we see here in our lesson today, where they're trying to work with authority over the law. This is where they fail. Now, we'll see there as we move on here in our lesson today in the sixth verse, that on another Sabbath, we'll see that Jesus, he was teaching in the synagogue and a man came to him with a withered hand. Now in the seventh verse, it is told to us, it is implied to us there that this was all a ploy that was set up by the religious leaders who, again, they were desiring to see what Jesus would do on Sabbath. So this is honestly, this is honestly a very sad sight to see, right? Because these religious leaders, these spiritual leaders, a man who they should have been helping, right? This was someone who they should have been helping. They were using him for a ploy, for a game, if you will, to test Jesus. So to me, again, this says a lot about the spirits of those religious leaders. It tells us a lot about what their mind was focused on, where again, their mind should have been focused on the Lord we find that their mind was corrupt, that their mind was again more worldly than it was spiritually. Because again, their concern was the authority. Where again, Jesus' concern was not about authority. Jesus, he was in the world to minister. He was in the world to save the world. And so we'll see there in the eighth verse, knowing what the religious leaders were up to, Jesus, he called for the man with the withered hand to stand with him. And then Jesus, he asked the religious leaders, he asked them, is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do evil, to save life or to destroy life? Now you have to try and imagine what thoughts were going through their head when, when Jesus posed this question to them. Because surely, right? Surely you should be helping someone. Again, as we saw in our Sunday school lesson last week, and as I mentioned in my sermon last week, we are called to be peacemakers. We are supposed to help. We are supposed to do what's right. We're supposed to do justly by one another and all of those that are around us. So you have to wonder what was going through their head because this whole time with the Sabbath, they were again trying to be beholden to a law that they did not understand. If we take a look at the law, if we go back to the book of Exodus, Take a look at the 20th chapter and the 10th verse in the book of Exodus. The scripture says, you shall do no work. You, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant. You see, this is what the religious leaders, this is what they were beholden to, but they, they misunderstood the law. This is why they were so upset that the disciples, that they went through the grain field and that they plucked heads of grain to be able to snack on the grains. But again, looking at the law, if we take a look at the 23rd chapter of Leviticus and the third verse, the scripture says, six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is a Sabbath of solemn rest a holy convocation. You shall do no work on it. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. So the Sabbath was a day that was geared towards God, not geared towards the world. So a day of solemn rest, a holy convocation, again, is what the law said there. Not a day to work, to do hard labor for, for profit, right? So again, if we think back to the disciples, were they doing hard labor by simply plucking a few heads of grain to, to snack on because they were hungry as they went through the field? Were they doing hard labor? Here they, they bring a man who has a disability. They, they, they set up a ploy and bring him to Jesus thinking, hey, Jesus, he's going to break the law. But in actuality, again, this was a day, a holy convocation, a day of worshiping God. What better way to worship the Lord than to help someone, to, to do justly by someone, to, to, to do good in the world, right? What better way of worshiping God? So if they thought that Jesus was going to do differently, because in their mind, it was uh, unlawful to, to actually help someone, to heal someone, they had the wrong guy in mind there. They were looking at the wrong guy because Jesus, he was going to be faithful. He was going to be faithful to the law. And again, the law didn't say anything about not helping someone on the Sabbath. Yes, it certainly spoke against hard labor, but helping somebody out, the law did not speak against that. So we'll see there in the 10th verse, 
that Jesus, he looked them in the eyes and he called on the man to stretch out his hand and he healed him. And rather than them seeing the error of their thought of their way, we'll see that in the 11th verse that the religious leaders, that they were filled with rage and they sought what to do with Jesus. So at the end of this lesson, we, we sadly see that these religious leaders, these supposedly spiritual leaders, that their heart, their mind was not in the right place. That's why they were always fighting against Jesus's authority. And the reason why their mind was not in the right place is because they were self-seeking. They were envious of Jesus's authority. And those traits, they are not spiritual traits, are they? No, those traits, they are of the world. And again, we cannot, we cannot do the work of the Lord. We cannot serve him properly if our mind is for the world and not for him. Our mind must be focused on the Lord. That's something that I said in last week's sermon. So again, if you missed last week's sermon, I highly recommend after watching this lesson, go back and watch last week's sermon because it certainly serves a role in, in this week's lesson. And I provide even more information to where again, we must be faithful to do what's right. The religious leaders, they struggled to do what's right because their heart was not in the right place to do what's right. They were unable to do what was just. They were unable to do justly by others because they were so self-seeking. They were so consumed with power and authority. Again, we have power and authority that has been given to us by the Lord. But again, in order for us to, to properly live by and with that power and authority that we have, we must be faithful. We must be faithful to the Lord and we must be faithful to the word of God as well. And again, when we are faithful to the Lord, when we are faithful to the word of God, we are able to be faithful to our duty, our duty as stewards of the good news, stewards of the gospel. And again, when we are faithful to our duty, we are better able to help someone somewhere. So will you be faithful to your duty? Okay, will you be faithful to your calling? Will you be faithful to the word of God? And again, will you be faithful to the authority that has been given to you by Christ himself. I certainly, again, I certainly hope that you will. Thanks for watching this week's Sunday School lesson. As always, I hope that you enjoyed this lesson. I hope that you will take something away from this lesson, that you will apply it to yourself and that you will share it with someone somewhere. And I hope that you'll come back for our Sunday School lesson next week. Make sure that you're following this channel so that you can get the next notification for next week's Sunday school lesson so that you don't miss it, so that you don't miss the Sunday school lesson, the sermons, the Bible studies, or the food for thoughts. Make sure that you're following this channel today.